Uh, but seriously, like for me, I just look, it, it's a, it, I, I try to be fair because I understand that it, it, it's not going to be a direct one by one, but it's like, fuck dude, what's the point of reading all these fucking books? Right. If, if then the character you're going to give me is like, yeah, they might like kind of look like them. Maybe they, they have the name. <laughs> Maybe they, mm. maybe they have the name, but they're not really fucking who you've grown accustomed to, who the books you've read and all that stuff. I don't know if other customers see it that way. I mean, Ripperverse is new. You've got a very specific direction for the Ripperverse. You want a single continuity. You want a consistency with the characters. You've got your Bible. You've got all that sort of business. So you have a, you have a very, uh, for want of a better phrase, but yeah, you've got a straight road. You've got yeah. a road you want to travel down. Uh, when you look at comics, particularly DC, it's all over the place. They're resetting every few years. So who who are the characters now? You know, I can read Batman 300 and go to Batman 500. I can see a slight change in Batman along the way. Not a colossal change, just a change because, you know, in the 300, Batman 300s, he was living in Gotham itself. He was living in a penthouse. Um, he had Silver St. Cloud as a girlfriend for a bit. Jason Todd's mum was Nocturna. There was, there was lots of different elements. And then when they went into year one and they reset a lot of things, Batman remained pretty consistent. They made him a little bit darker. They moved him back into Wayne Manor. But he was a, it's still a consistent character. So even though you could see some changes along the way, uh, you could still absolutely see the through road. You could see the, the thread. It just, you know, the path just... Just wound a little bit. Right. Today, because everything's just reset and reset and reset and reset, uh, and, and you create a come Right. Take, Jan take Dan Jurgens and take Bendis. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You have Dan Jurgens, who's a, a, a Superman stalwart, probably the greatest Superman writer of all time, I would say, and drawer in some cases. Uh, but he had a very specific vision. Rebirth comes along in a DC universe, trying repairing the new 52 nonsense. Rebirth comes along, get Jan Dan Jurgens back into Superman. Oh my God, it was brilliant. You know, you felt, you felt like you were reading Superman again. Right, right. And Bendis comes along. <laughs> Bendis and he wants coming. to Bendis it. He doesn't want to Superman it. He wants to Bendis it. Sure that. And, and, and now we just have a bunch of creators that are coming in and they just want to, they want to do their thing. Tom King's Batman mm. is unrecognizable True. as Batman. True. And he wanted to, to do something big before he left, so he kills Alfred. Yeah. Right, thanks. I've destroyed you, Batman. I've killed Alfred, and I've been taken off the book due to sales plummeting. <laughs> See you later. But I promise not to rape any of my employees. So I'll be back with more books and more same depressing shit, same fucking story. Every fucking new character I get, same fucking thing. Because I'm Tom King and I've got fucking daddy and mummy issues out through the eyeballs. Yeah. And then another creator will come in and it's, it's now completely different again and then different again. There's no consistency with who the character is. You, you had, was it even Chip Zdarsky before he went on to the main Batman book? Was doing that stupid gay baiting with Batman. Yeah, that was that chip. I do know the the story that you're talking about where he was. Yeah, yeah. I don't know like if it was the or yeah. Undercover, but yeah. Yeah, undercover Batman yeah. doing doing <laughs> undercover yeah. man, doing other, other undercover Batty stuff. man, you know. Yeah. Uh so it, it, it's just like who, who is this character? And 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 so when it goes to a when it goes to a gaming company and they get the license, um you can go one way, Batman Arkham. What did Batman Arkham do to, to try and make Batman, Batman fans feel as if they're playing Batman game? Well, they put it in Arkham Asylum, very recognizable place. They put very recognizable villains in, and then they got Kevin Conroy to do the fucking voice. So you, you have an absolute trifecta of, oh, this feels like a... a Batman the Animated Series, but if it was now sort of more realistic, yeah, and yeah. so people could could connect with that, brilliant games. Other companies will do what Insomniac's doing. They'll take the name of Spider Man, and they'll 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 put a costume on that's you know similar to a costume version that's been used. It's not the classic costume, 
but it's a version that has been used in the past. And then they'll just current day it. <laughs> you know, they'll they'll just make it so dated by by today's the today's ideology, today's politics, uh, today's progress, and it's all progressive. It's all one way. Yeah, every it's time. never it's it's never. We never see something. Not that I want to, by the way. I'm just not that I want to. I, I you never what, see a game come out being If there was balance, if there was balance, yeah. it'd be more digestible. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. If if there was, you know, if there was uh, something that sort of put it together, great. But it's always so leaning, and the characters have to always be on that side, and they always have to have that morality or that. Uh, that I don't even think morality is the right word because I think morality is out the fucking window with it. But they have to le always lean in that direction. All the characters that they interact with have the same viewpoint as well. Even the fucking villains. You know, we're, we're now living in an age of the most progressive villains as, as well. Everybody's misunderstood. Yeah, I'm not going to fight you because you're a woman. So I'm just going to give myself up. And if you think I'm talking bullshit, that was a story in Marvel. A villain gave themselves up because it was a powerful woman and they respected the power of the Whamons. That, that I mean, that uh, everything that I'm sure, you know, Spider-Man 2 is going to sell bucket loads. Oh, honey, if it, I mean, it's, 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 it's no way around it. A ton. But everything that I've seen from it just said to me, this game's not for me. Yeah. This game's not for me, you know? And it could be, the gameplay could be amazing. And I and I could and I could be playing and think, oh, this is great. The combat's great. I like the swinging, you know, the the open world, all that wonderful stuff. And then you get onto the yeah, bits. But I think, you know, I'm old, and I say to myself, I've played enough video games in my time. I'm okay. You know, yeah. I'm I'm okay not to go down this this pathway. Uh, have fun, do your thing. Uh, you know, get yourself pats on the back, get yourself some nice ESG scores. You know, get those raised up. And uh, yeah, I'll go. I'll go play uh, Star Ocean Second Story uh, in a week's time. And have a sense. much better time. No, I, I get you, man. I, I feel you on that about the whole lack of, you know, the, the continuity element. And it's funny when you word it the way I've been thinking. You've been bringing up Batman's a good a good example of that, right? It's like, yeah, liberties are going to be taken, but I do think that people are going to be a lot more forgiving of that stuff. If at least at minimum, the characters feel like who it is they are specifically and how they act. Right. Like mm -hmm. undeniably mm -hmm. Batman feels like you've mentioned these Arkham games, like Batman, right? Yes. Like it's believable. Right. Yeah. And, and that's, that's pretty much what you can ask for getting these I iconic villains. And, and that's the thing. I think some people think that when I say, okay, yeah, I take issue with this because this isn't who this character is, right? I see an adaptation, whether it be in or out like side of the comics, but I see an adaptation, let's say, in a movie. And I'm like, all right, that's not who that character is. Like, that's just, that's actually antithetical to who it is that they are. Mm -hmm. I think some people get it, get it twisted and think, well, okay, he's wanting like a direct adaptation, though. I don't know what's wrong with that. Uh, the Japanese have figured out how to do one by one adaptations and it works, works really well. In fact, DC's done a lot of them in animation um, that have been very, really, really close. I mean, like, you know, flashpoint, I just use that as an, as an example because it's mm -hmm. almost, it's, it's very close. I mean, it's switching out like a sword versus a gun, but like it was really freaking close. So they can't do it. Uh, it's just sometimes they choose not to. And my thing is, it's not not that I need them to be direct, though I wouldn't mind it, right? If it was a direct one by one, you can still tell a new story that is is fitting, right? As long as it's just that fitting, mm -hmm. right? It makes sense for that character. It makes sense for that that environment it is that they're going to be in. And maybe it's a story that has never been told, but at least make the characters the characters. Because at that point, it's like you're trying to sell me something. Like I said, people talk about me ragging on Marvel and DC. It'd be hard pressed to find maybe as is the only other one that may has invested much more as much money as I have in the, into those properties. Right. Gary. Uh, maybe get, yeah. Bring, bring exactly. Gary. Maybe, yeah. It, it, us three probably right. As uh, uh, we probably make up a decent percentage of, of, of dough that we've spent on these guys uh, over the, over the years, several, several decades. Right. So it's like, I've invested all this money. I think it's a realistic expectation. Mm-hmm. For me to say, look, 
if you're going to try to sell me on something, give me something that is recognizable. That's all I ask. And if it's not, yeah, I'm going to say that that's not what it is. I'm not trying to hear this whole, it's a different universe or some other shit that's always going to get thrown out because you're like, look, that's just not who these characters are. That's not who it is. They are the one that might maybe made me the most irate in recent years was a treatment of Marvel and the Captain Marvel movie. We'll talk about that in a little, little bit later in the Captain Marvel movie, which to me is one of the more, when you understand the importance of what Marvel, let's say meant to like the Mar like Marvel as a company in its universe, death of Captain Marvel, death of Captain Marvel and how that being their first big graphic novel, that was massive. And the way that they treated that character and where they basically, number one, made it as a side note, obviously there's a complete gender swap and then the character is unrecognizable even considering that, right? And I'm not talking about gender swap of like Captain Marvel. I'm saying like of Marvel. Marvel, yeah. Uh, which they put in the, in the, I was like, this is fucking, I remember in my review, I was like, I, want, I was, because I was at one of those dining theaters. I'm like, I, I'm eating chicken strips, right? Whatever I was, yeah. I'm ready to throw the shits at the fucking screen because I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm oh. probably the only one in the studio that knew any better, the right? Chicken's that was much like, more valuable than the, than the film. <laughs> that, yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's very true. That's very true. But I'm like, I was so like, what the fuck am I watching? And this character is, is unrecognizable and I'm expected to like just consume this shit. And someone in the chat also brought up with, you know, the, uh, the Adam Warlock situation as well. Oh. Uh, you know, it's another one. It's like these aren't these characters. You're utilizing them in a way that doesn't even make sense. Like I've said, it's like we I think we talked about it a, a, a couple of shows ago with it's like, dude, you bring in Adam Warlock after you killed off Thanos. The and you make him retarded and then make him retarded. Right. Like, yeah, the fuck. What sense does that make? What, what sense does that make? Why am I expected to as a fan to have to just consume that shit? And then it's like, well, it's a different universe. It's an adaptation. Uh, well, it's okay. I mean, gaming is, first of all, uh, three times bigger than movies. Okay? Uh, also, <laughs> the, the MCU is on such a... It's not on a downward spiral. It, it's walked off a cliff and it's just plummeted. It's falling right it's now. It's managed to fall somehow through the water <laughs> and it's currently on the way to the core of the Earth. Uh, it, it's fallen off that badly. And uh, with Insomniac, with, with gaming, they're looking to obviously attract the normie market. Can you blame them? I would say no, you can't blame them for that. True. So they're gonna, we're going to craft a story with Spider-Man regardless of whether it's recognizable or not because we are literally, net, you know, we're, we're trolling here. We are throwing a big net out and seeing how many people. You put some good gameplay, you put a recognizable character, uh, you get Spider-Man. That's what you got, you know, and and you wouldn't have that Spider-Man game if it wasn't for the Batman Arkham games, you know, the, you you wouldn't have that. Uh, so they're looking for a big normie market. They're looking for people that know nothing about Spider-Man, really. Uh, they're looking for people who don't necessarily know anything about superheroes. They're just looking for a good, open world, fun game with maybe some recognizable pop culture characters in it because it's brand, right. and the brand is Spider-Man in this case. Right. Um, there, even though Batman's got the best rogue gallery, I would say Spider-Man's probably had got the most well-known group of, of villains in, in a cluster. Um, you know, there will there will still be people out there who don't know who Two Face is really, where the, whereas he's actually one of the biggest Batman villains yeah, there is. Gotcha, anyway, gotcha, gotcha. So they're 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 sort of troll fishing over in that direction. Whereas movies, which are substantially different, lower in, in terms of reach to uh, an audience uh, comparative to gaming. Uh, and I think a lot of that has got to do with the, um, literally the, the easy access, you know, gaming right there, gaming right here. I'm in my house. You know, you want to go out to a film, you're going to a cinema, you right. know? So, so one of the reasons is you can get that whole feel and vibe right here in your own seat. Boom, done. And you're the hero because you're controlling the, the character. When you are creating something like the MCU, and when the popularity of the MCU is taking known stories and known characters, and it is twisting them still, they're not the same as the comics, but there is a reliability there. 
and there is a consistency with the character that the character is at least behaving how they would in the books, in the source material. Now it's not. True. Because we got, we got to the end of phase three, and they thought, right, we've got the juggernaut, we've got all the momentum, we've got all the normies. Now we can do what we did in the comics and go all new, all Marvel, <laughs> and push everything that failed and brought comic mainstream comic book DC Marvel to their knees. Yeah. And D DC, I'm telling you, DC's it is ooh, teetering. Yeah. DC is because uh, as soon as um Warner cut that off, they're done. Oh, 100 percent They are they are and, and Warner are thinking about it. Really, really thinking about it. Uh Marvel, I think, are a little bit more secure with Disney. Disney. Mm -hmm. But you know, we'll see. So they they need to make they need to be more consistent, but they decided not to be. Because then because the characters which which got everyone into this theater, the character got pushed aside. Not just the characters, but the character got pushed aside and the agenda got pushed in. And and all of phase four was emasculated men, um, bestest ever women. There was no struggle, no journey, no nothing. Uh oh. What is my storyline? Uh, well, you're a woman who's amazing, and uh, your journey's going to be by the end of the film, you'll either be amazing, or uh, 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 you'll know how amazing you are being told by every fucking character under the sun in the film. There's no journey, there's no struggle, there's no strife, there's, there's nothing that they have to go through because they're no longer allowed to make women vulnerable. They're not mm -hmm. allow them to 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 be feminine. They're not allowing them to be weak in some cases. Not allowing them to to fall. They're not allowing them to to lose to a man. There, there are so many caveats which have now been put onto these characters that they're just being strangled. And because they've conveyor belted all of the films, all of the TV shows now, it's it's just a product factory. It's a sausage factory. And and unfortunately, their audience are vegans. Because it's fucking Marvel. Yeah. You know, it's it's fucking blue haired Portlandian vegans who are just like, oh, the new the new Disney product out. Awesome. I can't wait to download it from Pirate Bay later. Sure. That's what they're gonna I'm a do. Broke ass bitch. Yeah, that's what they're gonna do. Meanwhile, they're they the, the actual audience themselves, the people who who invested, they get pushed to one side. So you can create a bubble universe. It's unrecognizable in a video game because you have much better tools that can drag somebody in. Gameplay tools, gotcha. exploration Good tools, point. Good point. you know, all of that the element. So you can you can afford to do that. But when you're sat there in a cinema looking at a screen, saying to yourself, "What the f am I doing here?" <laughs> you know, why am I wasting my time here? I mean, luckily we can turn around because because we go, "Yeah, baby, YouTube." <laughs> But, you know, there's a lot of people that don't, and they, they have dipped out, and that's why th th there's been flop after flop, because they're yeah. not seeing not just recognizable characters, because all this, these characters that are coming in, nobody knows who the fuck they are. Yeah, Nobody knows who the fuck they are. You, when, you, when you're pulling a no normie audience, you've got to have normie characters. That's true. That's a, that's a great point. You, you, you're you trying to appeal to a normies, uh, and the best way to, to do, do that was in a way that you did before, right? You give them the ones, that, the characters that are at least, you know, recognizable, right? Uh, and uh, they have at least a brand associated with them. And that's not mm -hmm. what it is you're getting. You're getting um, the the Miss Marvels of the world, not Carol Danvers, Miss Marvel. You're getting the Kamala Khans. You're getting the Iron Hearts. Hey, you're Bishops, getting the Iron Hearts. Yeah, the Echoes, Bishops, yeah. Agatha Harkness. Yeah. yeah. Who yeah. the fuck are you? <laughs> yeah, it's what that's everybody's what most asking. people are saying. Yeah, that's what the ninety nine percent of people are saying. Yeah, but you'll get some. Saying. You'll get some hardcore Marvel fans. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, I, I could hardcore. Yeah, and and so, like I said, it's not like they're doing it in a in a way that. Look, what doesn't make sense to me. It sounds like a layup, right? And it's like, okay, at minimum, at fucking minimum, man, you, you'd get some of the hardcore guys. To at least somewhat carry it, maybe they can't entirely, but at least that's a baked in audience if you're just honoring who it is that they are, right? Mm -hmm. Even if they are as less, let's say, less recognizable. The problem, though, 
as far as what's happening with these characters is that they're bringing in characters that number one, nobody asked for first and foremost, putting them in like situations like it had a fairly boring. Right. And, uh, and even then they, they're too chicken shit to make them who it is. They, they couldn't even give Kamala Khan a little stretchy, stupid fucking powers. Right. Like couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't give her that Agatha Harkness is fucking my age. Right. Uh, or whatever. Like, so it's not like, like they're even honoring, let's say even the characters that are more obscure. So it's just, a, so what, let me say this. The reason why I mentioned that is because you don't have that hardcore fan base who would go, okay, yeah, I'm getting some a character recognizable. Maybe I'm really into this shit, whatever. So you don't have that audience. And then you turned off the normie audience as well. The people that you're supposedly trying to appeal to. So what are you left with? You're left with the MCU. Yes. That's what you're left with. Yeah. Because you, you, you they even shit. did it, Kamala Khan, in, they, they bait and switched her into the Marvels, the uh, Square Enix uh, Marvels game, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and tanked it because of it. Mm-hmm. Because even the gaming people thought, oh, great, we're going to get an Avengers game. We're going to be playing Captain America, Iron right? Man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, no, no, no. We're now going to insert Kamala Khan uh, because Sam Aminot wants a payday. Yeah. To go with, to go with the millions and and Clinton monies and and B- Obama fucking you know all that shit, it's 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 just taken secondary uh, second place is characterization and and yeah. stories are about characters. Stories transcend politics. They transcend color. They transcend sexuality, religion. They transcend all of that because because stories are based on everyday things that people can relate to regardless of whether where they come from now and that is not allowed today today we live instead of living in the world of characters we live in the world of superficiality Mm. and and so it's a superficial trait which is always important we're going to race change this character we're going to sexuality change this character we're going to gender change this character all superficial traits that don't define who you actually are. And you mentioned the Japanese and the manga and all that sort of business. The Japanese do gay characters, trans characters, or gender ambiguity, you know, uh, uh, ambiguity characters way better than the West because that character won't be defined by that trait. Right. They, they will be a character in their own right, whether or not they are gay or whether or not they are trans or whatever. And it is very, you know, quite rare that they do that. But in, in, in Alice in Borderland, even when they, went, they did the live action version of Alice in Borderland on Netflix, probably the best character in the show is actually gender ambiguous. But is that ever mentioned? No. Do they ever mention it? No. Does any other character ever mention it? No. Why? Because they're just a character. That's that's a trait of theirs, and they're just a character, and it's actually the character that makes them interesting. Whereas the the West thinks it's the superficial trait which makes them interesting, because all they're bothered about is identity politics. True. And as soon as that is eradicated, and it needs to be fucking eradicated, hundred percent, because it's a brain rot. It's an absolute brain rot. And we can get back to actually creating characters again and give them some nuance and give them some vulnerability and femininity and masculinity uh, and agency there's no agency even with the female characters you know because it, it, it feels like they are just going down a predetermined route yeah, absolutely it's predictable yeah it is very very predictable i mean and i mean when we see the marvels i mean i think that's just going to be the most predictable piece of trash we've seen and that's why it's just bombing within disney they they want to get out get it get done it, get, get out the way man they, they have to get that out the way. Up next for the Ripperverse this fall is Alpha Core number one, written by one of the most prolific writers of all time, Chuck Dixon. Penciled by the legendary Joe Bennett, you're not going to want to miss this book. Visit Ripperverse.com to stay up to date and grab ISOM number one to get caught up on the first appearance of Alpha Core.